found himself in dire need. That is the theme that we're developing this Lent. I think it's a theme that lends us to being able to each week pointing to the pillars of spirituality, those important things that will help you and me to grow in holiness, to change our ways and to, and to grow closer to Christ. He found himself in dire need. It comes from the fourth Sunday's gospel where we're talking about the prodigal son, that moment when the prodigal son realizes that his life has just fallen apart around him and that the only way for him to survive is to go back to the father. Last week, if you recall, Jesus was out in the desert and he himself, although it doesn't use those words, found himself in dire need. 40 days without food, he had to be experiencing a real hunger, and the devil tried to trick him. Now, there's a real contrast between these two figures because the son, the prodigal son, he he sees no other way. The only way is that I'm just going to have to take hat in hand and go home to dad and hold, you know, and just tell him that I was wrong, and and that's the only way I'm going to get any food. Jesus, on the other hand, he's tempted by the devil. He's even offered the possibility of of satisfying himself, but rejects it. Jesus went into the desert to pray and was praying and communicating with God that whole time. And so by the end of those 40 days, he wasn't weakened by it. He was strengthened by his fasting. He was strengthened by his prayer. He had that capacity, that ability, to even stand up to the trickery of the devil. Our first pillar being fasting, that first pillar of prayer, those two working together to help us grow and to give us that strength and that conviction to know that God is with us and that even when the devil tries to trick us, he can't. All we have to do is invoke Jesus. Now today we get to this interesting story the story of the transfiguration. Second Sunday of Lent, we always hear one of the versions of this story. Peter, James, and John see Jesus transfigured before them. You know, I talk to a lot of people, and I hear the same thing over and over again. You know, if I had just been there, if I had just been up on that mountaintop, and I had this experience of the transfiguration before me, of seeing the the prophets and seeing Jesus like that, that would have done it for me. That would have done it. I would never doubt again. I'd never sin again. I'd be a perfect individual because that's all I need is that miracle. All I need is that transfiguration. That would do it for me, right? You look at Peter, James, and John. Didn't do it for them. Especially good old St. Peter who was very good at sticking his foot in his mouth. Even did it again today. Saying something that like just the snap like that. See, the miracles are not what's really going to help us. Well, they are are things that, like like having this Sunday, does help us in our Lenten journey to remember and to recall. We're people on a journey. We're not really destined to stay here. We're destined to be up on that mountain. We're destined for the kingdom of God. And this is just that reminder to you and to me how important it is for us to stay faithful. I know you would love to experience a transfiguration. I know you would love to see that. But it's probably not going to happen for you, so don't wait for that. However, we do have something that does happen that I believe is just as beautiful and just as powerful. It happens on this altar in a few minutes. The transubstantiation. This, my dear brothers and sisters, is the abiding presence of our Lord and Savior to us. That same Lord and Savior that was transfigured is also here to transfigure us, to change us. And so the Eucharist is one of those incredible pillars of our spirituality. The Eucharist is so important. And it's not just in the receiving and the worthy receiving of the Eucharist, but also coming before the Lord, coming before the Lord in adoration, coming before the Lord 24-7 who waits for us in the tabernacle, and all those times when he's exposed here on the altar for us to come, to kneel before his beauty, his sacredness, and to accept the grace that radiates upon us. You know, I always say, whenever I come before the Lord in adoration, whenever I have that opportunity to be here, and he's exposed, and he's right on the altar there, it's like the x-ray that just radiates out and pierces right through my soul. And while I'm there praying, I do recognize that he sees all of my needs, he sees all of my weaknesses, he sees all of, he sees it all. And there he is still before me, just radiating out the grace 
and the goodness that he wants to see. And even with my imperfections and even with my, my mistakes and even with all the things, there he still is waiting and hoping and, and radiating upon me. See, we have to come before him even in our holiness. We have to come before him even in our brokenness. And coming before him like that sometimes is difficult because we, we, we're afraid. We have that fear. And that's why we have the sacrament of reconciliation. That's why we have a confessional in every church. Because that's where we can start that process of accepting the grace. We're going to talk more about that in the coming weeks as one of those important pillars. But suffice it for this week to talk about how Jesus' presence in the Eucharist is so important. And one of the great pillars of our own spirituality should be quiet time with our Eucharistic Lord. Take advantage of the opportunities we have for adoration on Tuesdays most of the day, on First Fridays. Come any time when the church is open. You can be right in the presence of your Lord, just sitting quietly out in the desert with him. Something I believe that so many of us just are not used to anymore is that silence, that quiet time with the Lord, yet how powerful it is, how important it is. You know, it was interesting this past summer. I had an opportunity. I go visit my relatives, as you know, every year in Croatia. And they live literally in the town right next to Medjugorje. So I like to go over there a lot. And I go over there for their adoration. Now, on Tuesdays, you know, you ask any pastor. You get 20, 25 people show up to adoration. You're ecstatic because nowadays that's about the best you do. There were 20 to 25,000 who showed up for adoration. What a powerful moment it was. I can't even describe to you feeling that power of the Lord and all the prayers rising up to heaven and hearing the demons running away, screaming and running off and, and fleeing from the Lord and everybody being lifted up in grace. What a powerful, transformative moment. Come before the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. He calls us to that kind of conversion. He calls us to that kind of life. And I think it's sad how so few Catholics nowadays have that personal relationship with their Eucharistic Lord. Traditionally, it was one of those moments that people turned out for in large numbers. But now, sadly, it's not taken advantage of. Jesus Christ does want to be part of your life. He does want to embrace you. When we come before him, he now has that opportunity to speak to our hearts, to lift us up, to set us on the right path to put us on that journey. I think one of the important things that we really don't do well anymore is having those conversations where we ask ultimate questions. You know, the ultimate questions, why do I exist? What is it all about? What happens after death? Those important questions that seem to have just kind of slipped into non-existence for whatever reason. I think we need to start having that conversation more often in our families and in our homes over our dinner table, or maybe bring it to your place of work or bring it to other places and get the conversation going again. Because I think it's important that we recognize that there is God, that there is the one God, and that we serve that God. Otherwise, what ends up happening is exactly the problem that St. Paul is dealing with with the people in Philippi. These are people who have drifted. They've been caught up in their own lives, in their worldly existence. And as he said, your stomach has become your God. And I know that, I, that resonates with me because there's a lot of times when my stomach becomes my God, dictating exactly what I'm going to do. You know, when you're, when you're walking by on a, on a Friday of abstinence and you can smell the cooking from across the street and you're like, oh. <laughs> that, my dear brothers and sisters, is why St. Paul is saying we must be greater than that. That's why fasting, as we talked about, is so important. That's why prayer is so important. Because it demonstrates to us that we are greater than even our physical needs. We have power even over our physical needs. And we're able and capable of offering that suffering back to our Eucharistic Lord. I couldn't imagine existence without the Eucharist. I couldn't imagine a world where the Eucharist wasn't a significant part Today, especially, my dear brothers and sisters, consider that time that you can spend with your Eucharistic Lord and enjoy it. Find joy in it. In our Lenten journey, it's not all about just giving up. It's also about moving into and doing more. 
So Lent is unfolding, and maybe you've been struggling a little bit with your Lenten promises. Maybe the things that you thought you would be accomplishing, they're kind of falling behind a little bit. They're falling you know, into the back seat a little bit, and you haven't really been paying attention. That's okay. Pick it up and get going again. Start doing it. Consider doing things around here. Coming to the Live Christ, Share Christ, or coming to a Bible study. Sign up for Formed if you haven't. There's a great series by Dr. Gray called Into the Desert. Could it be a better title for a thing that you could look at during Lent? They're offering daily Lenten reflections on Formed. Sign up for it. it, it it's a great thing to add to your, your day's routine, to just stop and listen to these short little reflections. Maybe consider the Stations of the Cross on Friday night. Maybe come to pray with Father Benedict. But adding these things also bring us closer to the Lord. And the best way to grow closer to the Lord is through adoration of the Eucharist and praying with the body that he has given us, the church. So my dear brothers and sisters, in Lent, we might find ourselves in dire need. We ourselves might recognize how much our souls are yearning and pining, how much we need him. And we can go to him. And just like what we're going to hear when the Son goes to the Father, the Father's going to welcome us with joy. He's not going to be wagging a finger, and he's not going to come down on us. Come to the Lord, and let him satisfy your needs. Let him be the one. For when you find yourself in dire need, that is when the Lord is most present to you. Today, make that commitment to spending a little more time with Christ, to spending that quiet time with him, of asking those questions, what's most important? What is the ultimate reason for our existence? What is it that I'm doing and why am I doing it? And when you get those answers, I promise you, you'll want to bring them to the Lord. You'll want to spend more time with him because that's where you're going to find satisfaction. He found himself in dire need. I find myself often in dire need, but I also know that even when I'm in that dire need, that is when Christ wants to bless me the most. May he fill you with his blessings especially as we journey through Lent together. Hey.